In this video today, we're going to go through uh, two light energy questions that are quite interesting or challenging. And it comes from the PSLE booklet uh, from 2015 to 2017. Now, this is the first question. Mina used the, light, the setup below to conduct an experiment. She used a light sensor to measure the amount of light on the screen. So if you take a look at this setup, it has a torch light, an object, there is a screen. This is a shadow cast by this triangular object. This is the length or height of the shadow. And there's a light sensor here. So light sensor will measure the light that is not blocked by the object. Remember, light travels in a straight line. Now, she varied the position of one of the items in the setup and recorded her observations for each position as follow. Now, what is this one of the items? We do not know. We know it could be the torch light, it could be the object, or it could be the screen. But what we do have is we have some data or results. So we have some sensor reading. The first cell reading is 100 units of light and the length of the shadow was 7 centimeters. And somehow as the light intensity increases from 100 to 150 all the way to 280, as this increases, as it becomes brighter and brighter, the length of the, of the shadow also becomes longer and longer. What does it mean by the light sensor reading has increased? It means that this sensor is detecting a stronger light intensity. And using common sense, you know that this means that the torch light must be nearer to the light sensor, to the light sensor to detect a strong light intensity. So using this, we can already uh, know that the distance between the light source and the screen must be the shortest. The light detected by the sensor will be the highest. When the torchlight is far, far away from the sensor, the light sensor reading will be very, very faint or spawn number. And the length of the shadow will also be shorter when the torchlight is much further away. As the torchlight moves nearer to the object, the height of the shadow will increase. So using this information, we've got to make a deduction. What change did Mina make? Now pause for, for a moment to just show you. Notice that I have drawn lines to turn it into a table, including for the options below. This is to help me to look at my information much more easily. So what change did she make? Now I put in the data here, light sensor reading heading, as well as the length of the shadow. And I look at each of these options in turn and see if it makes sense and does it match uh, what the data says. So what if Mina moved the torch light towards the object? If that is true, torch light is moved towards the object, she should expect the light sensor reading to increase like this. So that should increase. Okay, so far it matches. If the torch light was moved towards the object, the height of the shadow will also increase. All right, this is what happens. And let's check this, it matches. So, so far, one seems to be the answer, but let's go on and read the rest. What if the object was moved towards the torchlight? If the object were moved towards the torchlight, imagine all the way until it blocks the torchlight. So actually, the light intensity here will suddenly change. So at first, it wouldn't change, right? Because the light that is shining onto the, the sensor isn't being blocked. But once the object is close enough to the torchlight, it will actually block all the light that is coming up from it and the uh, light intensity will go to zero. But the length of the shadow will actually increase as it moves, as the object moves nearer to the torchlight. This part, well, it matches, but this does not match. So therefore, two must be wrong. Let's look at three now. The screen was moved towards the torchlight. If the screen moved towards the torchlight, as you can see from the lines here, the height of the shadow will actually be shorter and shorter. The light sensor reading will be higher because as it's near, as the sensor is nearer to the torchlight, it will actually measure a higher light intensity. But the height of the shadow will actually decrease. This is the height followed by this height. When the screen is here, the height will actually be here. So this one is decreasing, which does not match this. So three is not the answer. What if the torchlight was moved away from the screen? away means it's further away from the light sensor, then the light intensity should be decreasing. But here it shows increasing. 
So therefore, 4 must be wrong. Right? Even the length of the shadow is wrong. If move further, the length of the shadow will decrease by shear shows increasing. So the answer for this is clearly 1. Now let's take a look at this. Weishan has three sheets of different materials with different shapes cut in the middle. Only one sheet is made of a material that allows light to pass through. When examining all this, you will notice that this is 3 centimeters, this is 3 and 3, this is 3 and 3. Of course, you can tell that the height here is also 3 because it is a circle. So that means that the dimension in terms of height and width is the same for all these three materials. So that means that if they were placed at the same distance from a light source, the size of the, uh, the light that beams through should be the same. So he did an, an experiment in a dark room. And dark means there's no other light other than this torch light using the following setup. Which one of the following could be seen? Now there's one more tricky uh, a condition here, which is only one of this material is allowed light to pass through, which is, means it's transparent. And in science question, that means that it shouldn't cast a shadow. Although in real life, you have tried before using your uh, glasses or plastic sheet, transparent plastic sheet, it actually casts a faint shadow. But in this case here, we will just take it as if it allows light to pass through, that means that it will not cast a shadow. So which of these following could be the answer? Clearly, you saw my answer is 3. And let me explain to you why is it 3. For me, doing this question is easier when I look at the options and I try to see which of the options makes sense. So for example, if this is the answer, 3, alright? That means that this object here, this object M is opaque. If object M is opaque, right, I, I remove the other two objects first. Huh? If object M is opaque, when the light shines onto this triangular hole, then a triangular beam of light will be cast here. And since the material is opaque, then light cannot pass through the rest of the material, so you will not see any light. That's, what, that's why it is all dark. And then what could P be to allow this triangular beam of light to appear here? P therefore must be the material that allows light to pass through the transparent material. So it doesn't matter whether it's a hole or no hole, it light will just this triangular beam of light will just pass through it and cast this. If that's the case, then this object here, this circular, uh this object, which is an opaque object with a circular hole, will be placed here. And what happens if it's placed here? Well, it will first cast a circular beam of light. And since this beam of, of this beam of light is much larger than this triangular hole, what goes through this what passes through this hole will still be a triangular beam of light. What happened to the rest of the circular beam of light? Well this part will all be blocked by material M. Only this part is not blocked because it's cut, so the beam of light that is triangular in shape will shine through and over this. 